In front of me, I have my SDS, impact driver, and my combination drill. What are the differences? Stay tuned to find out. These are the tools that I use most often. SGS, not quite so much. Combo drill, yes and no. Impact driver, pretty much on a daily basis. And the reasoning behind that is because it's just small, light, it's compact, it clips onto my belt easy enough. And 99% of the time, I don't have to do massive amount of drilling. But if I wanted to, I could. And I'll get onto that shortly. The combination drill is probably to me a happy medium between both the impact driver and the SDS. It's called a combination drill because it has several functions. It has hammer action for drilling into things like concrete. We have a screw torque system whereby I can alternate the torque so I can either have it on a very soft one if I don't want to push a screw in too far or if I've got a big long screw that I need to push into a long piece of timber say for all, um, a sleeper for example then I can crank the torque up on that uh, to use it for that. Um, it's also a drill function for uh, just drilling into wood, metal, plastic, etc. And it's got a dual speed on the top. You generally use speed two for the hammer action and for the drill, and speed one when you're on the screw function. This drill has digital chuck on it, sorry, a digital clutch on it, whereas a lot of the older versions, like this 18 volt one, and similarly with a lot of other manufacturers, it has an analog torque setting on it instead. And last but not least is the SDS drill. Now this is the most powerful out of all of these. Used for a lot of wall chasing, uh, drilling core drill holes, such as using cores like this, or for it going through very, very thick walls where you can use drill bits like that, uh, this is a one meter SDS drill bit. Not the sort of thing that you're gonna stick, or you wouldn't even be able to stick it in the end of an impact driver. But the impact, the, the, the SDS also has a drill function on it, much like the combi drill, just if you uh, just, just want to spin the drill. So with an adapter, for example, um, this one here, it's a chuck adapter. I could have I wanted to put a up to a 13 millimeter shank in there and have a wood bit on the end of it. Um, I don't know why I'd want to do that because I have the other tools, but there is an option if you wanted it. It has a drill and hammer action, which is very similar to the hammer action on the combi, but the distance that the drill bit actually travels compared to the combi drill allows the drill bit to penetrate the material a lot harder and a lot faster. So whereas the hammer action on the combi drill, the drill bit may only move, I don't know, maybe a few millimeters at a time to, to push into the, into the concrete or the brick or whichever substrate you're going into. Whereas the impact driver has a much larger reach, creating more, a bigger, quicker hole in that same substrate, which I'll just demonstrate shortly. They all have variable speeds. The SDS has the speed on the side there. Different manufacturers have them in different places. This one also has an anti-shot, anti-vibration system whereby the handle's rubberized. It's got um, a bit of flexibility in there. Um, there's also action on the rear here. Um, again, to help reduce the shock wave going through your hand and your wrist. And that's the whole of the rear part of the body here. The combi drill doesn't have any of that, and nor does the impact driver. But these, these drills, although technically the impact driver isn't a drill, are not designed to do what this one does. So let's have a quick look and see what the differences are drilling into this concrete block. One of the main key differences between these machines is that the SDS has its own fitting for the drill bit. And also as a key point when using an SDS, whether you're using a drill bit or you're using a chisel, or even if you're just using a, 
it for doing core drilling. Grease the end up before you put it into the machine because it will help keep it cool and it will help keep the longevity of the tool itself. Now I cheat a little bit and tip it down. With the other two machines, now you can buy these hex hank shank drill bits. Similarly with um, for screwdriver bits such as uh, this one for example, this has got a torque head on it but you can see it's got the, the hex shank on the end of it. That's because the impact driver here has a hex shape on the top. Um, this is because it has such a short barrel, it can't hold onto things such as deep as the chuck on a normal combi drill. But the drill pit bit itself can be used in both. And so you just put that in like that. Now one of the disadvantages of the impact driver is that because of the length of the bit and because of the shortness of the chuck itself, there is wobble in that in that bit. So you can just, just about see it moving, I hope, in the camera. Whereas because the shank can go in a lot deeper inside the combi drill, and the jaws are generally bigger, there's nothing there at all. So that gives you a much accurate drill. Technically, you shouldn't really use an impact driver for drilling. If you do, it should only be for lightweight stuff, um, plasterboard, timber, maybe a bit of sheet metal, and there should always be a smaller drill bit. Because, well, apart from anything else, the size of the drill bits that you get with the hex shank on the end of it are smaller and limited compared to, say, a normal drill bit which has a cylindrical shank on it. This is an M13, uh, or 13 mil, sorry, which is the largest that you can fit into size of the chuck for this drill. But you can see the difference straight away. And obviously that is not gonna fit into there. Similarly, it won't fit into the SDS either. Unless of course, like I showed you earlier, I use the adapter. So just to give a, a quick idea of the difference between all of these for drilling, this is on the fastest mode. I don't know if you, the camera will pick that up, but I've got four basic modes speeds on there. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this, but I can change the speed just by changing the button depending on what material I'm going for. As you can see on here, there's a screw, there's a small block, there's a large block, and there's a bolt. So there's proves that the machine isn't really designed for doing what I'm about to do with it by drilling into masonry. It's more for doing fixings, screws, bolts, etc. But let's just give it a go just to give you an idea of how they work. <clears throat> so this is a seven mil bit. So I'm going to share it with the combi. Let's move this out of the way. I'm just going to take that off first as well. So here we go, uh, on the fastest speed, we're on the fastest speed, and uh, this, this is gonna give the, the biggest impact. Did you see it move straight away? It is going, but it's, it's moved off target, off center, and it is struggling to make its way through. So we just take that out, put that into the combi drill. Flick it onto the second speed. And do a similar thing. You'll also notice that there's going to be a change in sound here as well because there's a different type of action. probably would have noticed there as well is that when I was drilling in, compared to the, the impact driver, the, when I started drilling, the impact driver moved, whereas the, com the com combi drill here didn't stay exactly where it was, and it went straight down, did the hole, and it also did it quicker than the impact driver. But that's what it's designed to do. 
And the SDS, well, again, we're gonna crank that up to the maximum speed. I'm gonna put it onto the drill and hammer. This is, again, this is a seven mil bit. It's obviously longer, but I bet it'll go through, well, decide for yourself just how much quicker this is going to go through. As you can see, that was, and you could obviously hear as well, much louder, but much faster. Probably went through that at the same speed as the combi drill, except obviously being a longer piece, longer bit, it actually went right through to the other side and blew a big chunk out of the back, which is also something you've got to be careful with hammer drills because they can be very aggressive. So if I just flip this block over, you can see it's blown a massive, great big hole in the back. So if you're drilling through somebody's property, you always have to be aware that drilling from the inside to the outside could cause that problem, whether it's brick, concrete blocks like this, or if it's a rendered property. So we've always got to think ahead. What, what I generally do is I go through with a smaller drill bit to start with on a lower speed, so I can find my marking point and then I drill back into the house using the, the size that I need to get the cable or the pipe work through. The SGS also comes with a hammer action. And instead of just doing what it just showed you with the drill and the hammer, it just punches back and forth. Then that is so you can use chisels, which neither the combination or the impact drill can do. The variations, different types, different manufacturers, it's a fairly small chisel here. This chisel I use for cutting out back boxes because it's the right size for a back box for a socket. And this is a scoop that I use for chasing walls up so I can lay conduit in with cabling. Uh, again, for doing sockets, light switches, etc. And very simply, just pops in the end where the drill was. Uh, again, when you use these, definitely grease the ends up. These have still got some grease on it, but I'm just showing show you very quickly how they operate. It just clicks in. Sometimes it takes a bit of force, depends on the manufacturer, how much use your chucks had. They quite often, they have a, a, a release on the gear so you find the point and it means you can just spin the chisel on in the chuck to the direction that you want it to be in so that you can get access to that particular area to make your life a bit easier. So just to demonstrate very quickly um, what these do, um, on this concrete block, I'll just take a normal flat chisel here. the end and here we go short and sweet demonstration but you get the idea now that could be in pretty much any material that you like obviously the other tools don't do that but the other tools do things that this one doesn't so using a seven mil drill bit here, uh, this is actually a metal drill bit, but it's generally universal. Just gonna drill into this piece of pine sleeper, just to show the difference again. So let's go there. I'm just gonna put my hand on the back just to keep it steady. I'm not gonna put any weight on there. Um, second speed on drill, off we go. And you see it's dropping down as it's moving past the grain of the timber as it goes in. Obviously, if you do this, be aware that the drill bits get very warm. Impact driver, same thing again. Again, I'm just going to rest my hand on the top. You can see already that the uh, speed has increased in the drill so that could lead to a bit of burning if you weren't careful you actually a bit of smoke coming out from that as it drops in um, but because there's no weight to this drill and i'm just using the machine itself it is taking a bit longer 
to penetrate the material. But as you can see, it goes through just as well. Although the blade, uh, the drill bit here is now incredibly hot because of the sheer speed that was going through. Could have turned it down, but I'm just using it as an example on the highest speed. So onto the SDS where I've already fitted the chuck adapter. And also means I'm going to need the chuck key, whatever I've done with that. Um, but so just bear with me a second whilst I look through all my tools. There we go. It's been so long since I've used a chuck like this. Oh, my job is very hot. So again, put it onto drill. It's on the maximum speed. And uh, let's move that knot out of the way a bit. So it's a slower speed, but the machine's a lot, got a lot more torque to it. Um, there we go, starting to bite now. Probably a lot more useful if you were drilling through um, something a lot more solid, like. Um, like an oak beam for example but obviously that machine here is a lot lot heavier than the impact driver or the combi but honestly i mean would you really would you really want to use this with a wood bit and use a manual chuck all day now something that the other drawers do much better then the SDS is screwing. I'm going to put the torque bit in the end and I'm going to take some sleeper screws. Now these are 250 mil if I remember correctly. So bear with me for a second whilst I just flip the piece of sleeper over. I'm just going to drive it straight in down. So again, faster speed. Take my uh, sleeper bolt here. There are different versions of, of them. You obviously can get them shorter. This one has a, an eight mil bolt head on the top, which would give a better grip for the machine and we'll be able to drive it in further. But do you really want these horrible black heads sticking out the top of your sleepers that you're gonna sit on, you're gonna get caught on? Not for me. So anyway, I'll give this one a try. Let's see how far it gets. So start off slowly till it gets a bite. And here we go. Obviously we've penetrated all the way through. So there's no thread left in there to, to drag that through. Ordinarily, obviously there'd be another sleeper below it. Um, so it will keep pulling. So let's take the bit out, put it into the combi drill. Now one thing with the combi drill, and unfortunately I've left it in the van, is that you do, we can get a handle. In fact, this one actually does come with a, a long armed handle with it. It's uh, exactly the same as this one, although this one's for my 18 volt, so typically it won't fit. So this is where the torque drive, you can either use the torque or the drill. I'm just going to put it onto torque, put it onto the one, and I'm going to change the torque. I'm going to crank it all the way up to the maximum. Now we'll do it on there. So we'll start off slowly again, just so it gets a bite. And off we go. Now I do have to be careful with this because I don't have the handle on the side. I've got to make sure it doesn't smack me in the face. And already it's hitting the maximum torque ratio on there. So we'll just flick it onto drill. And you can see I'm struggling a little bit already because it's it's twisting off but it is going 
And I, I am fighting against the drill here, holding it in place. But again, that did, did take it all the way through. So, I mean, I, there's definitely a, a power difference between this and the impact driver, and I could feel the mechanism and the drill itself forcing itself against me using the combi, whereas with the impact driver, I, I could just do that and drink a cup of tea. The way it works, it was just the machine does all the work and there's no fight against you doing the work. So, I mean, that is pretty much the basic principles between all these machines. They will all do what the others can do, but they'll do it in a different way. Obviously, apart from the chisel action, because these obviously won't do it. And if you're starting out in the industry, it doesn't matter what job you're doing, whether you're a plumber, electrician, etc. The combi drill is probably, if you don't have the funds to begin with, the best one to go for to get yourself started, whether it's Makita, DeWalt, um, Matabo, whichever brands that you'd like to, whichever platform you want to get involved with. And then quite often, a lot of the brands actually do a combi kit, which involves both the combination drill and the impact driver and you'll get a couple of batteries and a charger to start you all off and then as you progress you can move on to getting bigger machines so that's my basic introduction to all these machines their similarities the differences the different uses so what do you think uh, i could go into far more detail into these machines but we'll be here for hours and hours and hours of me describing what these really can and cannot do things like using spade bits and using drill bits like this the step drills there's so much i could talk about with these but as it stands at the moment if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below i'd be more than happy to answer them and please don't forget to like and subscribe because they all help the channel greatly so until next time thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one <laughs>